I put my monitor over here because I love the small HD monitor. It's amazing, but it's small. <laughs> and so if my camera's over there, which it is because I'm shooting on my 50 millimeter today, I gotta look at something to make sure that I'm in focus. Cause the last time I did this, I was not completely in focus the whole time. And it wasn't my, it was my fault. Everything's my fault. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree. There's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been running from the law. Hope they won't shoot me down. Soon. Hey, hey, it's MJ. Now, let me address the elephant in the room. Yes, I am now an old prospector. I wear old prospector hats now. Old prospector hats are cool. It's, it's going away back there. And so I figure I should just heighten what's up front and get that going out more, uh, creating more of a jawline. Today, we have the Zeiss Bodice 85 millimeter F1.8. Now this is the companion piece to the review I put up a little while ago, comparing the Zeiss Bodice 85 millimeter 1.8 to the FE 85 millimeter 1.8. I'll link that up for you guys as well. I want to tell you a little bit about why I kept the bodice over the FE and tell you why it is that I love this lens and why it's on my camera probably 85% of the time. 85 millimeter is my favorite focal length, but the bodice 85 is my go-to lens for anything portrait related. It gives you that nice uh, depth of field that you want in those beautiful cinematic close-ups, but it's also the perfect lens for portraiture. The Bodice 85 gives us that beautiful bokeh. I mean, that's really what we're looking for in a portrait lens, especially when you're at that f1.8. The bokeh itself is round, it's gorgeous, it gets a little lemony on the edges, but it just rolls off the frame. It's absolutely beautiful. The minimum focusing distance is about two and a half feet. And as with every bodice lens, it has that really cool OLED screen at the top, which I have been using every now and then. And the reason I've been using it is because I do a lot of documentary style client testimonial videos. And so it's nice to know my focusing distance so that I don't have to go in and do any cropping in post. It's also weather sealed. It has that blue weather sealing gasket in the back so you can take it out in the rain, in the weather, and you can shoot with confidence knowing that nothing's gonna get in there and mess up all your stuff. The autofocus is crazy fast. When you use eye autofocus on the a7 III or any of the Sony cameras, it's amazing. It locks onto the eyeball perfectly. It creates some in just beautiful dynamic uh, portrait shots. You get that nice soft depth of field sort of rolling off the face. You really can't do any better than with this lens. In terms of sharpness, I mean, it's sharp. It's crazy sharp. So what are the challenges? As I mentioned in the last video, there are no manual controls on any of the bodice lenses, except for I think the 40 millimeter might have something on it. But with the 85, there are no manual focus hold buttons. There's no toggle switches for manual autofocus. All it has is the rubbery focus ring. Now I've gotten good at it. I've gotten used to it. And, but when you're talking about run and gun situations for video, when you need to be in manual focus, uh, it's fine, but it does just kind of roll and roll forever with not having any sort of ridges on it, like a cinema lens or any of the G master lenses. It's really kind of hard to know exactly where you are. Not a problem. That's not what it's built for. So I understand that, but that really, in my opinion, is the only drawback of this lens. The other nice thing about all the bodice lenses is that they use the same filter thread, the 67 millimeter filter thread. Now I have multiple types of ND filters that I use, so I don't necessarily pop one off to the next, but if you're in a pinch and that's all you have is one ND filter or polarizer, then it's really, really handy to be able to do that. The lens also has image stabilization, which is really helpful when it comes to using it for run and gun events and when you need to go handheld. When you pair that with the a7III's image stabilization, you get incredibly, incredibly sharp images. So for that, with the autofocus uh, in video and in photo, I mean, that's a huge plus when you pair it with the image stabilization on this lens. Currently, the price sits at about 900 bucks, or if you get it used like I did, just over 800. So it's a killer deal at that price, especially compared to where the G Master is sitting still somewhere around 1800. Now it makes me a little nervous because I'm gonna be comparing the bodice to the G Master 1.4 at some point in time. 
And I don't want to like the G Master more, but I think that just extra little bit of depth of feel that you can get from it, plus the manual controls, might put it over the edge. But in the meantime, I absolutely love this lens. So uh, let's not count our chickens before they roost. Nope, that's not it. Hatch. Nailed it. So if you're a photographer, this lens is a must buy. The bokeh, the depth of field, the sharpness, the color rendering is out of control. If you shoot video, I still highly recommend it, but just know that you're not gonna have a whole lot of manual control in those run and gun situations. You have to do it all in camera, which is totally fine, and you get really used to it, and I think the picture that you get out of it is well worth it. All right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate you checking out my channel. Thank you to everyone who subscribed so far. If you didn't like this video and you, you hated it, that's fine too, um, because it'll just help me get better. So if you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you did subscribe, uh, but I'd appreciate it even more if you grabbed your camera and you went out and you created something. Now go do that.